Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be doing a book haul. So I don't know what's happening outside, but it sounds like there's literally like a million dogs outside my window. So I'm sorry if you can hear that, but we do have a dog park down the street. So I don't know if it's coming from there or the neighbors, but there's not really much I can do about that. But today I just have some new books to share with you guys. So I have a few that I've purchased, but actually most of these were sent to me and I'm really excited about them. But for the book that I did purchase, I actually used the service of today's sponsor, Karma. So I'm so excited to be working with Karma again because I use them all the time. It's so helpful to keep track of my wish list and to save some money on what I'm looking to buy as well. So in this case today I saved some money on Atomic Habits by James Clear which is this self-help book that I had really been looking to purchase but I knew it was probably going to go on sale so I saved it in my Karma app and was able to get a notification when it actually did go on sale. So if you guys aren't familiar with it, Karma is a Google Chrome extension and an app where you can save money on things. To give you a step-by-step -step walkthrough, all you need to do to use Karma is get the Google Chrome extension. And then from there, you visit your favorite stores and there's a little button on the side where you can easily save items to your wish list and then organize them into lists accordingly. You then can get notifications via email or mobile push notifications when an item that you have saved comes back in stock, goes on sale, or has a relevant coupon. As you can see, I have the things organized into different lists and it's awesome because I have many interests and I do like to keep them separated so then I don't get super overwhelmed. Karma also has a really cool feature where it will scan the web for relevant coupon codes so you can use those to save even more money and I have had a lot of luck with that which is always nice like you get to the checkout and then you save something a little bit extra. I don't know about you but that absolutely makes my day so it's really nice that Karma does all the work for you searching the web for those coupon codes and then just applies them automatically. It takes all of the work out of it. You can also earn Karma cash when you shop with select retail partners. So if you guys were interested in checking out Karma, which I definitely recommend, it will be so helpful. It will like change your entire online shopping experience. Then I will have a link down below for you guys to download the Google Chrome extension or the app. So definitely check it out. I'm sure you will not regret it. And thank you so much to Karma for working with me again today. So speaking of, I guess I should talk about Atomic Habits here by James Clear. So I I have actually read this book already. You can actually tell because like so much of the title has worn off. I don't really know why, but I do plan on rereading it because I am horrible for remembering the contents of the books that I read. It doesn't matter how fast or how slow I read. I just have a really horrible memory. And this is definitely one that I would like to absorb more from. I already feel like there's a lot of points that I've gotten from it that have been really helpful. This is essentially just a really straightforward, like no fluff guide to getting into the right habits and applying them in a way that is easy. It's going to take some work, but it's going to last. So it's not really about overhauling your life completely. It's just a realistic way to implement the good habits that you would like to continue with and to get rid of the bad habits that have been dragging you down, which can seem really overwhelming. And it's definitely something that I have wanted to do and wanted to work on, but I feel like this book really broke it down for me. So I'm going to, I think, listen to the audiobook next time, but already I have a lot of points from here that have stuck with me. I just want to like re-read it or re-listen to it so then I really get all those points and I'll probably talk about it a little bit more in a video on my second channel if you guys would be interested in it, but I've never really read a self-help book like this before, but I'd heard such great things about this one. I do think that it does live up to all the hype that it has. I really enjoyed it. Next up is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. So this book, to be honest, wasn't even on my radar. It popped up on my Instagram feed because I follow the public on Instagram and all I saw was that it said it was inspired by Schitt's Creek and I immediately picked it up. Like I immediately went and ordered it because I love Schitt's Creek. It is my favorite show. It is definitely my comfort show. I've watched it so many times and this book is inspired by Alexis. So the main character, her name is Piper and she is exiled to this tiny town in the Pacific Northwest. She is a Hollywood
Hollywood starlet and just ends up her life is completely upended. She is estranged from her family and left to fight for herself, which it's very much Alexis. You're getting those vibes there and I love Alexis as a character so I'm really interested to see like a literary version that is inspired by her and I believe the love interest is inspired by Mutt because he's like a gruff fisherman that she doesn't really get along with so that seems like an interesting combination but I would say my expectations for this one are pretty high so I hope it lives up to them. I am trying to lower them but we shall see. Next up is how Moon Fuentes fell in love with the universe and this is by Raquel Vasquez Gilliland. So I actually have this author's first book but I didn't get the chance to read it yet. This was sent to me by the publisher so thank you so much to them for sending it my way but I think this sounds really great. It's about the main character who her twin sister ends up becoming social media famous and the main character uses that to kind of hide behind her. She feels like she's like the ugly sister behind her which is really sad but she ends up agreeing to go on tour with her sister as the merch girl and she's going on this road trip across the country with her sister with all of these other social media influencers and obviously it's going to be a pretty transformative experience for her. I hope that she really learns to love herself because it sounds like she doesn't and that makes me very sad so I'm really looking forward to reading more of this. It is also an enemies to lovers romance story so that sounds really great. Next up is actually the book that I'm currently reading and that is Where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Doss. So this was actually actually sent to me by the author and thank you so much to her for sending it my way. I was so excited when I heard about this book because it's actually set on the island of Tobago and I think that is amazing. It's set in the main character. Her family has this island resort and she has lived there her entire life. So her mother died two years ago and also her childhood best friend ended up moving off of the island, never coming back and going to pursue his music career. And they were best friends but also he was her first love. So now he has actually returned as a VIP guest at the same resort that she is living at and has lived at her entire life. She ends up being tour guide for him and his group of, once again, social media influencer friends. I don't know what it is with the social media books, but I have a lot of them. Don't know why. But anyways, this has been really enjoyable to read so far. I am enjoying the main character and the setting is amazing and traveling around Tobago as she is acting as tour guide is really cool. So I I am getting a little bit annoyed by like the angst between the relationship there because there's a lot of like not communicating. I understand why, but it still is frustrating, but I am really liking it. The writing is great, so I can't wait to finish with it soon. Next up is Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. This book sounds so cool. It was sent to me by the publisher. This is an arc. It's coming out on, uh, it doesn't actually say the date, but it's coming out in September, 2021. And it seems so interesting because it's about like this night zoo that the main character, she is caring for all the magical and weird creatures that are in there. And she's doing that in order to pay off her family's debt so they can hopefully gain freedom eventually. But I am just so intrigued by the idea of this night zoo. Like I've never heard of anything like that before. So this definitely has like gone way up in my TBR pile. Next up is Malice by Heather Walters. So I actually am doing an Instagram partnership for this book which I'm really excited about but it is a dark sleeping beauty retelling which I think sounds amazing and it is also a lesbian sleeping beauty retelling so like everything about that sounds like something that I need in my life. I haven't read a retelling in a while and I really have been itching to get to one so this is definitely one that I would like to try and get to soon. Next up is The Wild Ones by Nafisa Azad. I actually have her debut novel somewhere it's right there, but yeah, I would like to read that one soon. I haven't gotten the chance to get to it yet, but look at the cover for this. It is absolutely stunning. So I believe this comes out at the end of August. So it was sent to me by the publisher and thank you so much because I was totally drawn in by this cover. It is a feminist fantasy story and it follows this group of girls who they are magical and they have to try and save the guy who saved them. So 
not really sure how that's gonna work but this cover like it just looks absolutely beautiful so if the writing is anything like that we are in for a treat next up is the suns will rise by joanne randell and jessica brody i have the first book to this series it is sky without stars i believe and i've really been meaning to read it i just it hasn't been the time yet so the publisher actually sent me the third book i'll have to get the second one eventually but i'm really excited to have like i don't know if it's a trilogy but if it is i'll have the whole series which gives me a higher chance of probably reading it because i struggle when there's a long time in between <laughs> sequels so this is like a futuristic sci-fi les mis retelling so i have no clue what to make of that i think it's a les mis retelling it does have to do with paris and france so I don't really know. I don't want to look at the synopsis for this one in particular because obviously it's the third book, but I do know it has to do with France and it's also sci-fi. So very interesting combination. Next is Vampires, Hearts, and Other Dead Things by Margie Fuston or Fuston. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm so intrigued by this one because it's about a girl who ends up going with her estranged best friend to try and find a vampire to save her father who is terminally ill. He has cancer. And I don't know how a vampire is going to save that, but like, I love the casualness of there being a vampire. So this seems like a really intriguing blend between fantasy and realistic fiction. And I'm excited to see how that combination is going to work. Seems like it might be a good Halloween or fall sort of read. Next is The Last Words We Said by Leah Shears. So this cover is also so beautiful. I love illustrated covers and this just is definitely doing it for me. Also, the reflectiveness, the foil, I love it. But this book is about a girl who her boyfriend, he has died, but she's the only one, like there's three friends and he disappeared and she doesn't believe that he's actually dead because she still is seeing him. But the other two friends have kind of moved on and been doing different things. So I think this is going to be a story that deals a lot with grief and loss. And it kind of reminds me of this book that I read like a long time ago. I think it was one of those MTV books. It was, I Heart You, You Haunt Me. I don't know, but it definitely gives me those vibes. And that was like way before I liked reading that I read that one. I remember my sister had that book, but I can't help but think of that one when I read the synopsis for this one. Next up is Parachutes by Kelly Yang. So this book actually came out last year, but I pre-ordered the paperback because I do really enjoy a good paperback. <laughs> and this is about parachutes, which they are kids who are sent to school in America. They're sent to live in America while their parents are still back in Asia. Their wealthy parents are still in Asia. So the main character, she didn't think she would be one of these parachutes, but she actually ends up being sent from Shanghai to a stranger's house in California, and she ends up embracing her newfound freedom. So that seems really great, and I'm excited. It follows two different teenagers who are in this situation, so I am getting kind of Love Boat Taipei vibes, where it's like the kids are sent away from the parents, and I don't know if it's going to be like Love Boat Taipei, where they basically party the whole time, and it's not like an educational thing like the parents are thinking it is, but we'll see. Next up is When the World Was Ours by Liz Kessler. I really love historical fiction, as you guys know, and this is a new historical fiction. So it is following different characters who it's 1938 or something like that in Vienna. I think it's 1938, 1936. I was so close. But you're following three friends who are spending this perfect day together before the world around them pretty much falls apart. So it seems like it's going to to follow them as they are torn apart during the course of World War II and how it affects each of them individually. And I feel like it's going to be definitely a very heart-wrenching read. It is actually inspired by a true story and it says three friends, two sides, one memory. So I feel like this is going to be very sad, but definitely seems like something right up my alley. Next is The Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer. I am so excited for this book. It sounds very Christmassy, so I will be saving this for around Christmas time but it follows the main character who is a Jewish girl who loves Christmas and it is a secret of hers. She actually is a best-selling novelist of Christmas romance stories, but her publisher ends up proposing that she writes a Hanukkah love story and she ends up not really having any ideas. So she's turning to the matzah ball, which is this celebration on the last day of Hanukkah. She's hoping that that will give her some inspiration. So I'm really excited for this one. It sounds great. The main character also is chronically ill, so there's representation for that and I just think it seems adorable like everything that I want and more and this one is coming out 
September 28th. And the last book that I have for today's haul is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. Erin A. Craig is the author of, oh my gosh, it's a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling. Why can't I think? of the title. The Kingdom, Kingdom something, what? House of Salt and Sorrows. I always get it mixed up with To Kill a Kingdom because the covers kind of look similar, but I was so pleasantly surprised by, I forgot the name again, House of Salt and Sorrows. I literally said it two seconds ago, but I was so pleasantly surprised by her first book that I, once I saw this book, I definitely pre-ordered it. And it seems like it's going to be perfect for around fall and winter because literally in the synopsis, it says when fall turns to winter. So I'm like, yes, now I know which season to read it in. But I would imagine that this is kind of a horror story too. This one isn't a retelling as far as I know, but it features this like place where it's surrounded by mountains and woods and there's monsters in the woods, but now it seems like the monsters are coming back. So that doesn't seem good. Okay, so those are all the books that I have to feature in today's haul. Thank you so much to the publishers and authors for sending them my way. I did buy a couple of them, but most of them were actually sent me which is really nice and makes it so I can continue to read the up-to-date releases. Thank you also so much to Karma for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check them out in the link down below. I love their app. You definitely won't regret it. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another one soon. Bye!